everybody, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Hope everybody's having a really good day. Today, I am going to finish the Piss of Sophia. Yay. So I'm gonna leave it off. I'm gonna start where I left off. Before I do, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Please share, because it's caring. And if you get anything from my work, a light bulb, a dot connection, something new to read, please consider supporting my work. The information is linked down below. Love donations are helpful donations so I can eat and pay my bills as I live in communist New York and you need for things and I'm allergic and I can't get it. And I was unfairly treated. And before you go into, well, Sue, well, do you have retainer money? Because I already spent a lot of money trying and didn't get anywhere. There's corruption everywhere. I'm just getting my spot, guys. Okay, mind you, if I mispronounce anything, I can't project certain words because of my teeth and other issues. So please bear in mind. If then a man knoweth that name, when he shall have passed from the body of matter, no smoke, no darkness, no authority, no ruler of the sphere of the fate, no angel, no archangel, no power shall be able to hold back the soul that knoweth that name. But when it shall have passed out of the world, it uttereth the name to the fire. It is quenched and the darkness retireth. If it uttereth it, to the demons and the receivers of the outer darkness, to their rulers, their authorities, or their powers, they shall all be destroyed so that their flames consume them and they shall cry aloud. Thou art holy, thou art holy, most holy of all holies. And if man uttereth that name to the receivers of the malignant torments, to their authorities and all their powers, and also to Barbello, to the invisible deity, and to the three triple power gods, the instant he shall utter the name in those regions, they shall all fall on their faces and be dissolved and perish and cry aloud, O light of lights that are in the boundless lights, remember also and purify us. When Jesus had finished speaking these words, all the disciples cried out loud with great sobs, saying, in order that they may chastise it for six more months and eight days, and then bring it up into the way of the mist, that each of the rulers of the way of the mist may chastise it in his torments for six more months and eight days, then bring it unto the virgin of light who judgeth the good and the evil, that she may judge it. And when the sphere shall turn, she will hand it over to the, her receivers, that they may cast it into the eons of the sphere. And the workmen of the sphere will cast it into the lake, which is below the sphere, so that this lake becometh a seeing fire and eateth into it, until it hath mightily purified it. Then cometh Aluam, the receiver of Sabiath, Adamus, who gaveth the drought of oblivion unto the souls to bring a drought full of water of oblivion and give it unto the soul that it may drink and forget every place and every region through which it hath passed so that it be cast into a body which shall live out its time in constant sorrow. This is the punishment of him that curseth Mary continued further and said, Oh, again, master, as to the man that perish, persisteth in slander, 
When he passes out of the body, whether shall he go and what will be his punishment? Jesus said, when the time marked by the sphere cometh for a man that persisteth in calamity to pass out of the body about in Sharon, the receivers of Ariel come about and draw that soul out of the body and for three days travel around with it, instructing it concerning the creatures of the world. Then they take it below into Amenti, unto Ariel, that he may chastise it in his torments, 11 months and one and 20 days. And then they bring it into chaos unto Abedoth and his nine and 40 demons, that each of his demons may assail it for 11 more months and one and 20 days, scourging it with whips of smoke. And then they east it into the river of smoke and boiling seas of fire to chastise it therein for 11 more months and one and 20 days. After that, they carry it into the way of the mist that each of the rulers who are in the way of the mist may chastise it in his torments for 11 months and one and 20 days. After that, they take it unto the Virgin of Light, who judgeth the righteous and sinners, that she may judge it. And then the sphere turneth, hand it over to her receivers, who will cast it into the eons of the sphere. And the workmen of the sphere will carry it into the lake below the sphere, so that this lake becometh a seething fire, eateth into it until it hath mightily purified it. Sounds like a big ouchie. And then Aluam, the receiver of Sabiath Adamus, bringeth a drought of oblivion that it may drink it and forever and forget every place and every region through which it hath passed so that it may be put into another body which shall pass all its time in affliction. This is the punishment of the slanderer. Mary said, woe, woe unto sinners. And Salmon spoke, spake and said, Jesus, master, in the case of a murderer who hath committed no other sin but that of murder, when he shall pass from the body, what shall be his punishment? Jesus answered and said, in the case of a murderer who hath committed no other sin but that of murder, when the time is fulfilled by the sphere for him to pass out of the body, the receivers of Idaboth come to lead his soul out of the body and bind it to the feet to a great demon with the face of a horse to gallop around with it three days in the world. And then it is carried into the regions of ice and snow to be there chastised for three years and six months. And then it is brought into chaos unto Abedoth and his 40 and nine demons, that each of his demons may scourge it for another three years and six months. After that, it is brought into the chaos unto Phosphorone to be punished in her torments another three years and six months. After that, it is brought into the way of the mist, that each of the rulers of the mist may punish it in the torments of the regions another three years and six months. After that, it is brought unto the virgin of light, who judgeth the righteous and sinners. And when the sphere turneth, the, she ordereth it to be cast into outer darkness until the darkness of the mist shall be removed, so that it may cease to exist to be dissolved. These, this is the punishment of the murderers. Peter said, Master, let the woman come to an end of their questions, that we also may question thee. Jesus said unto Mary and the other women, give place to your brethren that they also may question. Peter answered and said again, Master, in the case of a thief that sealeth secrecy and persisteth in his sin, what he passeth out of the body, what is his punishment? Jesus said, in the case of such a man, when his time shall be accomplished by the sphere, the receiver of Adonis come after him to lead his soul out of the body 
and travel around with it three days instructing it in the creatures of the world. Then it is carried below into Amenti unto Ariel that he may chastise it for his torments three months, eight days and two hours. Then it is brought into chaos unto Idvath and his nine and 40 demons in order that each of his demons may chastise it for another three months, eight days and two hours. After that, it is brought into the way of the mist that each of the rulers of the way of the mist may chastise it with the smoke of his darkness and his malignant fire for another three months, eight days and two hours. After that, it is brought unto the virgin of light who judgeth the righteous and the sinners and she may judge it. And when the sphere turneth, she handed it over unto her receivers that they may cast it into the eons of the sphere and bring it unto the lake below the sphere so that this lake becometh a seething fire, which eateth it into it until it is mightily purified. Then cometh Elohim, the receiver of Sabiath Adamus, to bring it the draught of oblivion and give it unto the soul, that it may drink thereof and forget every place and every region through which it hath passed, and be cast into a body lame, halt and blind. This is the punishment of the thief. Andrew spake and said, in the case of one proud and contemptuous, when he shall have passed out of the body, what shall be done unto him? Jesus said, in the case of such a man, when his time is accomplished by the sphere, the receivers of Ariel come after him to lead out his soul and travel around the world with it for three days, instructing it in the creatures of the world. Then it is brought below to Amenti unto Ariel, that it may be chastised in his torments for 20 months. After that, it is brought into the chaos of Idvath and his nine and 40 demons, and he and his demons, each of them chastise it another 20 months. After that, it is carried into the way of the mist, that each of the rulers of the way of the mist may chastise it for another 20 months. And after that, it is brought unto the virgin of light that she may judge it. And when the sphere turneth, she handed it over to her receivers to cast it into the eons of the sphere. And the workmen of the sphere bring it, it unto the lake below the sphere so that this lake becometh a seething fire which eateth into it until it has purified it. And I am the receiver of it. Sabiath Adamus cometh to bring it to the drought of oblivion and give it to the soul, that it may drink and forget everything in every region into which it hath entered. He cast into a body lame and contemptible, that every one may ever despise it. That's harsh. This is the punishment of the proud and contemptuous man. Thomas said, In the case of a man that blasphemeth persistently, what is his punishment? Jesus said, in the case of a man, such a man, when his time is accomplished by the spheres, the receivers of Adabah come to bind him to the tongue to great horse-faced demon and travel around with that soul through the world for three days and punish him. Then it is brought into the region of ice and snow to be punished there for 11 years. Then it is carried below to the chaos unto Idabah and his nine and 40 demons, that each of his demons may chastise it for another 11 years. Then it is carried into the outer darkness until the day when the great dragon faced ruler who encircleth the darkness shall be judged, and the soul becometh hard and frozen, it persisteth and it is dissolved. This is the punishment of the blasphemer. Bartholomew said, in the case of a man that lieth with a man, what is his punishment? I don't like this. Jesus said, in the case of the man that lieth with a man, and the man with whom he lie, lieth, their sentence is the same as that of a blasphemer. When the time is fulfilled by the sphere, the receivers of Adabath, come to find their souls and that he and his demons may torment them for 11 days. I'm going to put a pause right there. This is where I feel 
the I mean, there's other parts, but this is where I feel the manipulation of the elites came into this into this book. And I'm reading it, I don't agree with this. And I could say right now, there's a reason why this is here. And there's an inversion. There's your inversion. Because they well know that a lot of these elites lie with the same sex. They do. And a lot of them switch and inverse their gender. So they put this in here, they're there to scare you. Be you. But I don't agree with this. Then they are carried into the rivers of fire and seas and seething pitch full of pig faced demons that eat into them. And then the rivers of fire another 11 years. Then they are carried into the outer darkness until the day of judgment when the great darkness shall be judged and then they shall be dissolved and perished. Thomas said, we have heard that there are men on the earth who take the sperm of men and the flux of women and mix them with lentils and eat them saying, we believe in Isu and Jacob. Surely this is on an unseemly deed. Then, then was Jesus wroth with the world and said unto Thomas, I mean, I say this sin is more heinous than all sins and all inequities. As for men of that kind, they shall be instantly taken into the outer darkness, nor shall they ever be brought back to the sphere, but they shall be destroyed. They shall perish in the outer darkness in the region where there is no mercy, no light, but weeping and gnashing of teeth. And every soul that shall be thus carried into the darkness shall never again return, but shall perish and be dissolved. John answered and said again into the case, a man who hath committed no sin, but hath done righteous persistently without finding the mysteries. So as so to be able to pass through the rulers when he shall pass out of the body, what will be done unto him? Jesus said, in the case of such a man, when his time is accomplished by the sphere, the receivers of, oh boy, Shane Shuk, I'm not pronouncing that right, who is one of the three triple power gods, come to find his soul and lead forth his soul with joy and gladness and travel around with three days instructing in the creations of the world with joy and gladness. Then they'll bring it below into Amenti to instruct it in the punishments that are in Amenti. They do not chastise it therein, but merely instruct it concerning them. The heat from the fire delayeth it only a little. Then it is carried into the way of the mist to be instructed to in the punishments of the way of the mist, the heat from the fire delaying it a little. Then it is brought into the Virgin of Light, that she may judge it, and set it near the little Sabia, the good, him in the mist, until the sphere turneth, and Zeus and Aphrodite come before the Virgin of Light, while Kronos and Ares are behind her. Then she taketh the soul of that righteous person to entrust it to her receivers, for them to cast into the aeons of the sphere, for the workmen and of the sphere to bring it into a lake below the sphere so that this lake may become a seething fire and eat into it until it be mightily purified. Then cometh Alam, the, the receiver of Sabiath Adamus, who giveth the drought of oblivion unto the souls. He bringeth the drought of oblivion and giveth unto it, that it may forget everything in every region through which it hath passed. Then there come a receiver of the little Sabiath, the good, him of the mist. He bringeth a cup full of intuition and wisdom and also prudence 
and give it to the soul, casteth the soul into a body, which will not be able to fall asleep or forget because of the cup of prudence, which hath been given unto it, but will be ever pure in heart, seeking after the mysteries of light until it hath found them by order of the virgin of light, in order that the soul may inherit the light forever. Mary said again, in the case of a man who hath committed all these sins and all these unjust inequities, will he suffer all these punishments together? Jesus answered, yeah, he shall suffer them. If he have committed three sins, he shall suffer three punishments. John said again, in the case of a man who hath committed every sin and every inequity, but at last hath found the mysteries of light, can he be saved? Jesus said, such a man who hath committed every sin and every inequity and hath found the mysteries of light and hath performed them and accomplished them and hath not fallen away and committed sin again, he shall inherit the treasures of light. Jesus said unto his disciples, when the sphere shall turn and Kronos and Ares shall come behind the virgin of light and Zeus and Aphrodite shall come before her circling in their own aeons the veils of the virgin shall be drawn aside. In that hour, she shall be filled with joy, seeing these two stars of light before her and every soul, which at that time she shall cast into the cycle of the eons of the sphere and descend into the world, shall be righteous and good and shall find the mysteries of light in the birth. And even if it have to return to birth again, it shall find the mysteries of light. But if Aries and Kronos are before the Virgin and Zeus and Aphrodite behind her, so that she doth not see them, then every soul which she casteth into the creatures of the spheres at the time shall be evil in wrath and incapable of finding the mysteries of light. Jesus spake these words unto his disciples in the midst of Amenti. The disciples cried aloud with sobs, saying, Woe, woe unto sinners! on whom the indifference and forgetfulness of the rulers lie heavily until they pass out of the body to suffer these torments. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, son of holiness, that we may be saved from these torments and these judgments, which are prepared for sinners, for we also have sinned, O Master, our light. The righteous, they went forth three by three to the four points of heaven. They preached the gospel of the kingdom in the whole world, the Christ being active with them in the words of confirmation and the signs and wonders with accompanied them. And thus was known the kingdom of God in all the land and in all the world of Israel. And these kingdoms is a testimony for all the nations which are from the east unto the west the end I, I i definitely enjoyed this it gives a lot of um insights on that you're a light body that you need to seek inside of yourself to find the light to find the righteousness you are given free will in order to determine who you are as a being, you you forget when you come into this life your your prior incarnation and what you did and what got you here again. But I argue with some things in here. I I don't necessarily believe um, because we live in duality. There's positive and negative. And I've been touching upon this in almost every one of my videos. And without making a mistake and learning from your mistake, you're not going to learn. But even if you make a mistake, it depends on the level of what that mistake is. But I don't think your soul should be tormented in what we would encapsulate what hell would look like, because it would just be a negative polarity plane, which is also a service to creator. And you also have to think about 
those who have infiltrated our realm in the most heinous and disgusting of ways and done some really negative, horrible stuff that I can't even mention here, those souls automatically go back to creator and it gets dissolved and reborn into new pure souls. The slate is wiped clean with them. It's like they never existed. And then they're reborn into something new and better. The idea that you're going through like Dante's Inferno. That's another reason why I read that. You're going through the, the cycles of abyss, but what happens if this is the abyss? What happens if this experience is the abyss? That you get tormented every day. You have to overcome that. I just find it really interesting that they're talking about a menti when Amenti is not a bad place. They narrate this to be a bad place, but Amenti is not a bad place. It's where all the ancient knowledge and wisdom is. It's during the Atlantean time. So in this book, Yeshua is acknowledging the existence of Amenti. Though I don't believe that a lot of his words were mishmashed. I don't believe they were his. Some of them, yes. We have to remember that a lot of things were infiltrated to make us to be in fear, to keep us slaved in the slave mentality, to obey, obey, obey. And if you don't do this correctly, you're going to inhale sin and fire and brimstone. For some things, I, I do believe you, you have a tormented soul, but it's a part of our experience being here in their density. Some lives you are the victim and other lives you are the murderer and the aggressor because that's how you learn. Will you be punished for it? Well, if that's a part of the experience you need to go through for a soul growth, sure. But what happens if you kill somebody out of self-defense? It's you or them. There's just so many things that come up when I'm reading a lot of these texts that just irk the living shit out of me. Um, and other things... You know, you can't take everything that you read to heart. There is definitely good components to this and especially finding it all within you. All the mysteries are written in your DNA. All the mysteries are written in that quantum computer and in your brain. It's there, it's written, it's in it. We just have to go inside to do the work to find it, which is absolutely not easy because a lot of us don't even know what to look for. But it will be revealed. It will be revealed. If anything taking out of this book, it's that the light is there. And the beings of light are up there. And there are layers of, of light that you ascend to. They're called densities and dimensions. There aren't anything there. Yeah, you get a soul review and you do have people there to give you love and light. There's no judgment up there. They don't judge you in heaven and what six density is called. These beings don't judge you because they know everything that you had to do in your life was out of experience of your soul growth. They know that you're trying to be a good person. So why are they throwing you down to hell to torment you? Especially if we're on the grand stage of God, playing out roles for God, or I would say creator. So 
so I just want to, um, I don't agree with the, the um, homosexual thing. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. Um, there are many cultures in the ancient past that had homosexuality. I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing. Um, why? Because it's none of your freaking business what other people do in their, in their privacy. They're not procreating. Okay. They're just, they're doing their humanly act in another way. What is it your business? Yeah. There's a lot of things going on in our paradigm right now that are showing you, but there's a lot of really good people out there who contribute to society and do the right thing that happen to just like the same sex. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's again, a part of creator's stage that that's what he wanted to experience to that person. So stop judging that, stop condoning it. I don't condone what's going on right now because they're making a circus out of it. But there are very, I, I have a lot of friends who are in that community. They're beautiful, beautiful human souls that do really good for this world. They shouldn't be condemned because that's how they were innately made. So we gotta look at things in an objective and subjective way. I absolutely must say beyond those little things here and there, it was a really good book. I hope you all enjoyed it. I mean, I'm just expressing my opinions and, and my perspective on it. You might have your own and that's absolutely fine. Um, I just think we're all one. And we have to start acting that way. That means embracing everybody. No one's religious book is right one over the other because in, on, in all honesty, there isn't no religion upstairs. It's the law of one. And I'm as much as I am reading, that's all I've been getting in the last couple of days from all the books that I read. It all goes back to the cosmic law of one. There's no religion upstairs. Religion is a man-made concept to keep you in order, to make you obey, to bend over and to just follow, follow, obey, obey. When you already innately know your moral compass, you're taught that animals, they don't go to church, temple, or mosque. And yet they give us so much unconditional love. And even the wild animals, they're just running off instinct. We have to start looking outside the paradigm box that we're all been given and really search because we all really need to come together. You know, when people are like, have faith, you know, as creator, you know, he'll cover you and it's now eight months. And of course, I have a lot of guides and a lot of things. I have, I have a lot going on. But you know what? That's something where, okay, you could say that. You could pray for me. You could hit the like button. Nice city words don't have action behind them. Put action behind your words. I'm here reading these books and I'm here trying to form a community of people who need direction and who are really getting a lot out of my work and buying the books and reading them and having the same very similar perceptions. Some may change. But that's okay. We need to put down it all and know that we're a one species, we're humans. And stop the division, stopping and obeying and bowing down and succumbing to things that are not serving your greatest purpose in life. 
That's just my opinion. But the world has been running the same way for a very long time and it has not worked out, has it? Nope. In the same name of Christianity, people were slaughtered and killed in the name of it. People, they, the crusaders went across and spanned it out all over the place, trying to convert people against their will. Is that, is that not, do, do we forget about that? Thou shall not kill. Doesn't matter what kind of neighbor they are, right? I'm going to kill you if you don't believe in my God. I can go on with all the other religions. It, it's, I'm just saying. You got to look at everything with a, with a, a bird's eye view from a million miles above to see how everything's been infiltrated, structured to such a way that it enslaves all of us. In this book, Jesus, the mysteries are all within us. It's all about the light that's within us, that we radiate, that we want to achieve to ascend. It's that ladder. So just every day, do really good, put out good vibes. That's it. I'm sending each and every one of you love and light. I hope everybody has a remainder of their weekend. It's nice. It's really pretty outside. I hope everybody enjoys. And I will see you on the next one. I have a lot of stuff coming up. I'm trying to get it all in beyond by the end of the month. So I have a feeling I'm going to be shut off. So until next time, see you soon. Bye.